Oh, what's good on YouTube? One only extra. I'm here. Uh, beautiful, beautiful freaking day today. So, oh man, it's the video that no one likes because it's so negative. No, it's uh, I don't know if I'm gonna say five things or three things or whatever, but it's things I don't like about this 1100 factory. You're like, X Ram, why do you always find faults with everything? Well, uh, simply because nothing's perfect. And to give you guys an objective re review of something, I have to be able to find faults about it. And there are some. So, to start, I'm going to talk about the headlights. Now, there's two things about the headlights that actually bother me. The first thing is they're incandescent like halogen bulbs. Everybody else puts fucking LEDs in their headlights. For some reason, these guys did not. And they haven't for years. So the headlights of this motorcycle are definitely outdated. Now, that's the first part of the headlights. Last night, I found the second part of the headlights that sucked. <clears throat> the high beams, which I think just need to be aimed, but even still, they cut the two low beams, so now all you have is one single beam in the center that doesn't really fan out very well. I don't know why they didn't keep both low beams on and then have the high beams go over top of it because the headlights on this actually really work at night the low beams do but not so much the high beams so to cut the low beams is, is kind of strange I'm sure other bikes do this but with the way that these headlights are configured if you leave the lows on and then add the high this the beam pattern would be amazing because you'd have just far enough out and wide that you need covered and then with the high beams it would add that extra distance and, and then I'd have zero issues with it but because it cuts the lows and only adds the high beam that is just a beam of light that is very centralized and doesn't really fan out uh, it doesn't work as good I used it last night and I was, I was disappointed in the pattern so that's it you know headlights they work they need the low beams need to be upgraded which i'm going to do and the high beam even if adjusted i don't feel will even cover enough ground to just be a beam of light straight out talking of kind of dated uh the dash on this is definitely dated uh if you look at the new s1000rr or the v4s uh, from ducati this style of tft is it's just like the first generation that Ducati put out, like the 11 and 12 99s. It's, it, just looks, it just looks antiquated, even though it's not. But it is, you can definitely tell it's age. The other thing is, if you can see, but there's a lot of stuff jumbled up on this dash. And if they can clear out some of the clutter, like not necessarily be showing the trash control with uh, ABS, really controlling all this stuff in a box by itself because what Ducati does and so does S the BMW, they make it a menu you can scroll through. So when you're done scrolling, it goes back to just, you know, miles an hour in your rev counter with maybe uh, like a very small indication of what uh, you have selected. So it cleans up the dash really well. I mean, it's cool that you got a little lean angle thing, but I did notice that with the lean angle, you actually have throttle and brake input, which I thought was unique. Let this guy on a Harley go by. So while the dash has got some cool features, it's just, it's, it's dated and it's <clears throat> very, very, very cluttered. On the plus side, I just hit 200 miles. I've had this bike for a one week. So awesome. We're almost there to break in. All right, so let's move back from the dash 
and let's go to the rear sets. Now I get that this is a race bike for the street and I get, come on people, oh man, and I get that the foot pegs need to be high uh, because when you lean out, you have hard lean angles, it doesn't drag, I, I get that. But one of the issues with this bike that a lot of people that are under six foot, maybe even 5'10", are gonna have problems with, is I could be able to, I could be able to put your feet on the ground. I could be able to flat foot or even go with balls of feet. Like I'm six foot, I'm on the balls of my feet right now. I'm not even flat foot. The what it, the issue it causes is a cramped riding position. Like your knees feel like they're touching your elbows. And I'm hoping the rear sets that I get will help that a little bit. I don't think it'll completely alleviate it because your exhaust is right there, so you can't really drop it down that far. The other issue with the seat and the seating position is uh, the width of the seat itself. Um, the width of the seat itself, because it's relatively wide where you would normally drop your legs down, it makes it seem taller than what it is. I mean, it's still a tall bike. I, I can't remember what the seat height is. It's probably around 32 inches, maybe a little more. Uh, but because of the with the seat your feet have to go out wider which you know obviously cuts down on the angle of your legs to the ground making it wider makes your legs in fact in essence shorter even though they're not but it's, you know that's what happens science uh, so the other thing about the seat is where you put your legs down at it's actually hard right there on that crease and that crease when you're sat back or even a little far in the middle of it it actually digs in to uh, my hamstrings my upper hamstrings my hamstrings and a little bit of the butt cheeks so it's actually kind of uncomfortable after a long period of time because it's just hard on that spot so I don't know how many things that was but that was really my only issues with this motorcycle I'm not saying it's wildly uncomfortable because I thought the 1199 is still much worse than this. But it does have its flaws. Oh, the other thing that I just thought of as I changed a lane and used the turn signals, the selectors for you know what mode you're gonna go into or your turn signals and stuff, they don't offer very good textile feel uh, if you're not looking at what you're doing you're probably going to do the wrong thing and that's just because the buttons feel like mush you can't tell if you're when you turn a turn signal on and you go to cancel it which you know this thing doesn't have automatic canceling turn signals like his competitors do being that you don't really know what your thumb's doing unless you look at it it causes you to look away it causes you to look away from you know the road which is obviously dangerous and even even getting used to it i'm sure i've gotten better with it but it's still it doesn't have that okay you definitely clicked it over to the right okay you definitely hit it dead center so you canceled it it doesn't have that textile feel when you actually do this stuff so i think the switches need to be upgraded enough to really give a lot more feedback to the rider so they don't have to look down and see what the hell's going on again the longer you ride with something the more you're used to it but being new straight to the bike it can turn people off to it but yeah so that's what i have to say negative about this machine it sounds like a lot it sounds like i'm nitpicking um in in ways i kind of am but the reality is this machine is fantastic it is powerful it's the most on rails machine i've ever been on and I, I actually i absolutely love it so i know people are gonna give criticism and rightfully so but you know go do a test ride on one tell me what you guys think or if you have one tell me if you agree with some of the points i made
I don't really make anything that's outlandish or ridiculous. There, there's definitely some weight to it. But yeah, that's my random things that I don't like about this bike. I can't say hate because I don't hate this bike. This bike's fucking phenomenal. So, bleh. I'm gonna go meet up with Mr. The Hef 520 and the homie Bill. We have some business to discuss. So with that, y'all have a good one. I'm gonna hopefully have some on-ramp fun. I doubt it though, because truck, you know, Yaris.